Hi everyone, my name is Alexis Carr and we are going to be discussing multimedia and learning. Now our learning objectives or standards are going to be NETSC 3B, maintain and manage a variety of digital tools and resources for teacher and student use in technology rich learning environments, and demonstrate fluency in technology systems and the transfer of current knowledge of design and multimedia technologies. We will just be discussing memory and how it's the foundation of learning, um, as well as how we gain the knowledge that we have, how we go about finding and retrieving that information. Now the goal by the end of this presentation is to be able to identify how we can keep up with the information that we do, such as the information that is included in our illustration. So here we have one person trying to keep up with a variety of things. You have a number, song lyrics, your bus schedule, AC unit things, tax rules, advertisements, all kinds of things. So the obvious question is, what is a memory? Well, according to Britannica, a memory is both a result of and an influence on perception, attention, and learning. Basically, repeated action or repeated attention results in a cumulative effect on our memory and it enables activities such as skillful performance on a musical instrument or reciting a poem or being able to read and understand words on a page. Of course, learning could not occur without the function of our memory. When you are learning something, you are being taught something. And at any given moment, you could be taught 20 to 50 new things. However, our memory is what helps us monitor and keep up with those 20 and 50 things. So when you are taking English, math, science, and social studies at one given time, and you have to keep up with all that material as well as take tests, sometimes at the same time, it is our memory that is helping us to keep that information. Now I have included a brief video on memory encoding because now that we know what memory is, it's time to take a deep dive into memory encoding. So this is what it looks like. I won't play it just for the duration of our time. Now, memory encoding is the concept of memory in and memory out. Now, it's that concept that is essential to successful learning. We all know that our brains are very dynamic. They're multifaceted. They are constantly evolving. However, our brains come in contact with so much during a day that it can be hard for us to remember certain things. In order for our brains to distinguish what we have learned, what we need to learn, and what we are learning, our brains separate the content for us. Now, we were given the example of a closet and how our brain is like a closet. The information in our brain, it doesn't just, you know, stay there 24-7, 365 days. So we have to think of our brain like a closet. Information doesn't sit in our brain like a bathing suit in our closet during the wintertime or a winter sweater in our closet during the summertime. We have to put the information in, however, it doesn't wait for us to pull it out. It interacts with the different information that's in there. Much like how we have dressers or containers for our clothes, our brain, it kind of does the same thing. There are categories for the things that we learn. So, when I am trying to sort my winter clothes apart from my 
summer clothes or my fall clothes apart from my spring clothes and things of that nature or whether it's starch or not starch if I'm sticking with the closet example I know that my brain is doing the same thing essentially it is separating the things into specific categories so we can retain our information. Our brains have three memory types that helps us interpret information. We have our sensory memory, our short-term memory, and our long-term memory. Now, all three of them are very distinctive, so we're gonna take a deep dive. But first, let's look at them as a whole. So, with sensory memory, our short-term or working memory, and our long-term memory, we can see how they kind of intertwine and what separates them. When we have our current or incoming information, it's our sensory information or our sensory memories. Things that require a little bit more attention are our short-term memory. And then things that require encoding or practicing is going to be our long-term memory. Things that we really have to drill into our heads. Now, with each memory type, of course, I'm going to do my best to explain them, but I have included a brief video um, that I will link so that way, if there's something that I don't make clear enough, we have that video to kind of fall back on. But when it comes to sensory memory, Thirst can let us know that our sensory memory is the first level of memory. Those include the things that we sense. So sensory memory is very self-explanatory. Things that we see, smell, if I can taste the fruit, or if I see, hmm, there are white walls surrounding me, or there is a stain on my brown sweater. Now, sensory memory also involves habituation, which helps us get accustomed to things that we've been exposed to. So if there's a constant chirping sound coming from my smoke detector or beeping sound, and after about five, 10 minutes of me hearing it, habituation lets me get used to not hearing it at all. So it could very much be going on around me or in my background. However, I've gotten accustomed to the sound, so it no longer stands out to me. Then, of course, the video will be there to play for you all, should you need it. <laughs> so our next memory is going to be our short-term memory. And that just houses things that catch our attention. So that could be things that we're interested in. If you're interested in sports, the NBA playoffs might be something that catch your attention. Or if you're interested in memory, this presentation might just catch your attention. So working memory has a short and limited duration, but it is something that is a constant in our day-to-day -day progressions. Short-term memory discards most of the information once we are done with it. So if I'm driving and I say, hmm, remember, I got to take exit 42A. I have to take 42A. I have to take 42A. Okay, I'm passing 41. I'm past 41B. Okay, 42A. Ah, oh, I forgot. I didn't. I didn't take 42A. Basically, I need something that is going to help me remember that, all right? So, in the illustration, we see that I mistakenly forgot 42A. However, it's no, no shocker when it comes to driving because there could be many distractions while we are on the road. So, what you could do or one thing that you could do to help you remember exit 42A have your GPS playing, and you can hear that voice say, take exit 42A. Take exit 42A, approaching 42A. Things like that to help us, one, 
remember. Two, catch our attention so we can remember. And then three, stress the significant information to us. And then, of course, we have our video on short-term memory, should we need it. Now, of course, with short-term memory, repetition is key. Repetition always helps us refresh the information that we have. However, some information, once we retain it, can be dropped. So, if I'm studying for a test and I had to learn every single thing in my notebook, whether I've heard it or not, I'll learn it through repetition. However, once I take my test, some of the information is like, whew, don't ask me. I've taken the test. That's all I know. I can't recall anything because there was no significance to all of the material. Now, in regards to our short-term memory, it is basically the gatekeeper to our long-term memory. So, that one step further, of course, our long-term memory, it is what occurs outside of the immediate consciousness. So, whether you recall what you did when you were five years old and you're now 50, or something you can recall five years ago at 50, those are things that might be long-term memory. The items that are stored in our long-term memory represent facts. Um, they represent people, objects, actions. They can be classified in two different topics. We have declarative or non-declarative. So declarative memories are kind of like a declarative sentence, all right? They contain information about facts and events, whereas non-declarative memories are the storage unit of information about basic skills, our motor movements, our verbal qualities, visual images, and our emotions. Now, of course, we have the difference between short-term and long-term memory available for us. So if I have to just take a brief deep dive into what separates our short-term and long-term memory, I'll look at this illustration, which was provided by Harvard University. Now, let's just know that short-term is primarily encoded acoustically, typically the 15 to 30 seconds long, and then there's limited storage, like five to nine items. Whereas our long-term memory it's primarily encoded semantically. There is an indefinite duration of storage. And lastly, there's unlimited storage. Like I said, some people can recall things from 50, 60, 70 years ago. Some people, that's a lifetime. Some people, it's not. If I'm 70 and I'm recalling something at 69, is that short term or long term? Whereas if I'm 70 and I'm recalling something from the age of seven, all right? Now a few examples of our memories would be like listening to educational songs or creating catching sayings or acronyms to with our long-term memory. For instance, when I was in fifth grade, we had the saying, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. To this day, I know my order of operations. That is an example of my long-term memory. Whereas completing a daily routine can help you. In my classroom, I keep the same routine. That way my kids don't have to worry. We have another example. But in conclusion, our memory refers to our continued process of information recollection over time. And it is essentially very necessary for our cognition. So, when it comes to the things in this illustration, we now know the different levels of our memory, and that is why we can recall these things. And then, of course, here are our resources for today's presentation. Hopefully, you all learn about memory and all that it entails.